Hey guys, I just wanted to give a quick unboxing and first impressions of the well-making optical snoot. So I have been searching for some sort of device uh, to, to put on some of my LED lights to be able to create shapes and interesting textures on the background, kind of like what you see behind me. This circle is kind of just like the most basic form of that. But I was really looking at the Aperture Spotlight mount uh, because it's really in an identical version of like a Source 4 fixture. I really enjoy the way that those shape and uh, can cast light. But the sad thing is, is the Aperture Spotlight mount is $500 and that is just a little too expensive for me. Uh, I kind of view myself as a budget filmmaker. So I did was doing some more research and came across this well-making snoot. Okay, here's the unboxing. Well-making Bowen's mount. Let's see what we got. All right, user manual. Here are the, looks like the gobos and some color filters. Trash. Trash. It's a lot of, <clears throat> it's a lot of foam. How do you get it out of here? You just pull. No. Oh, wait. Okay. There's a bottom piece. Trash. Maybe I can push it out. Wait. Oh, okay. Took a good bit of force. More trash. Plastic trash, and here we go. Stuff is just sliding around. Okay, here's the, I think it's this focusing is not screwed down. So, there we go. Yeah. Bowen's mount, snoot. Very cool. So here's the uh, little user manual, and I'm just gonna read what it says. It doesn't say much, but um, so the product features are, it comes with an optical lens for zoom in and zoom out. Um, basically what it's doing is it has aperture blades that are closing in and opening up similar to your camera lens. And then it has an easy way to project color and shadow to the object. So those are the gobos and color gobos. And it says with the optical shutter, you can adjust the size of the shadow until you like it. So we'll see what we like. But yeah, a few of the features that I enjoy are basically it being able to create really hard edges you know, when shooting an interview or some B-roll to create some hard shadows or textures on the wall. Um, I was on a shoot recently where we did have the aperture spotlight mount and it was awesome. It worked really well. But again, it's really expensive and it's actually really heavy because it's made of solid uh, metal. This optical snoot is also fully metal, but it feels a little more like aluminum, so it's a lot lighter. So there are six different shape gobos, and there are also four different color gobos. And each four of those colors, there are two of them. So there's two green, two red, two blue, and two yellow, which is nice. So I think we may be able to like do two of them together to do some color mixing on that. So here are the six different shape gobos that you'll receive. This first one is uh, just a window blinds. Uh, this will probably be one of the most used ones uh, in, in this collection. The next one is just some 
slanted lines just to create some sharp lines or you can actually blur them out as well with the focusing ring. Here's a little, I don't know what to call this, starburst kind of pattern. Here's uh, just a basic four panel window, which could be nice if you don't want the window blind effect. Here's a just a grid of circles. We'll see what that looks like. It could be nice to add a little bit of a more modern look with these circles. And then what I'm probably most excited about is just the single slit. There's so many times when I'm like, oh, I just wish I had this like dash of light across the background. This one will be the most used and the window blind will probably be the next most used. So I think all of these shape gobos could come in really handy. Um, now, a few of the things that I'm not very impressed with, the, a few of the cons with this optical snoot. Number one, starting with the gobos, there is this gobo holder, um, and you can see right here, there are two uh, kind of metal clips. And to get the gobo in there, you have to slide it in between both of those, but it's a little bit difficult to get it to make contact with both of these clips so that it's held in there securely. Another really difficult thing is there's not really a way to adjust the rotation of the gobo once it is in the light. Um, you really just have to try it and if it's not right, take it back out and then rotate it here in the gobo holder. That I wish there was an easier way to be able to quickly rotate it while it's in the light to where you could see exactly where it is. Another aspect of the optical snoot that I can kind of tell that they cut some corners to maybe make it a little bit more cost effective is the focusing apparatus is not very accurate. So on top, there is a small screw that will tighten down and you can, so you can loosen it and move it forward or back to focus or defocus the light. But whenever you get it to where you want it, the exact place of focus, whenever you tighten it down, it's really difficult to keep it in that exact spot because whenever you twist it, it will start to move around as well. And so I don't have a great idea, a great system for uh, being really accurate in the focusing yet. Another aspect that I don't love is with controlling the size of the light, um, the aperture blades, I'm not sure exactly how many there are, but you can definitely see the aperture blades whenever you start to close down. You can see right here, even just these sharp lines, it doesn't create a perfect circle. Now to mitigate that, you can defocus it and so you get a little bit closer to a circle, but if you're wanting a smaller circle with hard lines, it's not gonna be a perfect circle. It's gonna, it's gonna be more of a, let me get out of the way, more of a octagonal shape, which is not ideal. I don't, I don't love that. All in all, my first impressions is this does exactly what I was hoping it would do, uh, but it just doesn't do it as well as a nicer piece of equipment like the Aperture Spotlight mount. Um, for now, this is gonna do great because it's so much cheaper. I think the price on this was around $150, so compared to $500 for the Aperture Spotlight mount, this is definitely worth it. So let me know in the comments what you think uh, is this really even worth $150? Or would you say, no, just drop the cash, go big and get the Aperture Spotlight mount? Let me know, thanks.